Hey y'all, Data Guy here. Uh, and today I wanted to make a video for y'all uh, about the data engineering life cycle. Um, so data engineering life cycle is a term that gets thrown around a decent amount. Um, and it encompasses everything you're seeing here on the screen where you know I wanna talk about basically every step from data being actually generated to being used. But then I actually want to take it a step further than this diagram and kind of expand it out to, hey, what are the data engineering practices that are taking place over the course of this life cycle? So instead of just, you know, going generation ETL, I want to talk about it more in the context of seven different phases that data goes through as it flows through the business. Um, and then also the steps that a data engineer must take to ensure a, you know, obviously efficient data engineering life cycle in this modern age when you're not really only now following data and hearing best practices, but bringing in things like software development, um, life cycle best practices, you know, doing things like CICD um, and all those different pieces that fit together to make efficient data engineering life cycles. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to break down with you what I think those seven stages are, some common pitfalls, mistakes, people make in those stages and what they also typically involve. Um, so you have a good picture of what the data engineering lifecycle looks like for a particular project. And that's really what we're referring to when we talk about the data engineering lifecycle is let's say you want to create or maintain a pipeline that supports a line of business or a certain business objective. This is the life cycle that that pipeline goes through over months, years, and, and even decades in some cases. Um, so really crucial stuff. So the first step of any data pipeline is actually collecting the data. Um, and this data can come from many, many different sources, but these sources are kind of grouped in two different buckets based on like what you might be dealing with. So primary data selections or data co collection methods, um, interviews, polls, surveys. This is just more the t typical like a hey, categorization of data. Um, of like, hey, whether this data came from a primary source, just like you learned in grade school, or a secondary source is written by someone else about something, or does it come directly from their mouth? However, in the actual data uh, space, typically these sources are gonna be internal systems like ERP or CRM software, external sources like social media, data platforms, APIs, public data sets, um, you know, th even things like Kaggle. And here's actually a list of just like all the most common data that is used during data collection or data, the data collection stage. Um, and it's really important not to skimp or trust the descriptions of data in this data collection stage, but actually diving in, opening up the CSVs, making sure that that data is accurate, it's timely, it's relevant, it's actually what it says it is. Uh, because most of the challenge at this stage is often just dealing with data in inc inconsistent formats high volumes of data, it's hard to check everything, and ensuring the data and privacy and security of data as it's collected is equally important if you're in you know, one of those fields where you need to anonymize data or you're dealing with healthcare and financial data. Um, and then also, when you have this many different sources, I mean, these are just the most utilized, but there's typically many, many other data collection sources, uh, integrating data, disparate data sources can be technically challenging, and it involves requiring robust ETL processes and tools. So you need to make sure you have the right tools for the job as well. Um, but really, everything starts with the data collection phase. Now, the next step after you've collected your data is data integration and storage. Once your data is collected, it's most likely gonna need to be transformed and stored in a structured format in data warehouses or lakes. Um, and data integration involves the typical things that you know, you know, cleaning and transforming and consolidating data from various sources uh, into one cohesive format and is very crucial for actually transforming data into a manner that it can be analyzed downstream by end users and making that data accessible and manageable. I mean, part of your job as a data engineer is transforming the wild west of just crazy data formats, ugly data coming from a variety of different systems and putting it in a pretty format that the data analysts and the data scientists and downstream users who aren't equipped to deal with all of that data talk uh, can under read it and then understand what's happening. Um, and something also, so while you see you know AI power, so there's a bunch of different ways you can approach data integration. You know, you're gonna need to decide on your storage solution. 
Is it cloud-based? Is it on-prem? Uh, ETL versus ELT, so extract, transform, and then load? Or are you gonna load it first and then transform it afterwards? Do you need things like real-time data integration? So is this something that can be batched once a day, once an hour? Or does it need to be truly, every time a data point is produced, it needs to be consumed and analyzed? And that's really for you know real-time data systems. Um, and then this last one, so AI powered, um, well, you know, that's kind of a fluff word. What I really mean by that is, hey, do your downstream systems need to be AI powered? Do you need to transform this data into, let's say, a vector format so it can be more easily consumed by ML models? Um, and so that's what I really mean by AI powered. And that's something you really need to think about these days because so much of your data that you're going to be producing and cleaning will have actually eventually been used, be used for some kind of AI or ML initiative. So really important to keep that in mind here. Also, some of the typical challenges you'll face in this field are things like data decay, where data becomes quickly outdated, handling large data volumes efficiently, um, and then also just ensuring data quality and consistency across sources without duplicating data entries is another very common issue. Uh, but that really kind of covers the second step, which brings us to my third step, which is everyone's favorite, and data cleaning. Um, so data processing and cleaning is key to converting raw data into a format that's suitable for analysis. Uh, and this involves data cleaning, which is removing or correcting erroneous data, normalization, standardizing data formats, transformation, deduplication, verification, merging data sets, rebuilding missing data, uh, standardization. It's a ton of different things that you need to do, um, but a lot of it, luckily, you can automate these processes using scripts, using data processing frameworks to increase your efficiency and spend less time on this because this is where most data engineers spend the majority of their time is cleaning the data, figuring out how to develop processes to clean the data in such a way that you don't actually have to manually do it because no one likes cleaning data. It is so boring, but it is also so crucial to almost every data use case. Um, and some obvious challenges that you might run into in this phase are things like data anomalies, missing values, outlier detection, really ensuring that the cleaning and transformation processes don't distort the original meaning of the data also requires careful design of algorithms and validation technologies or techniques because if you just clean over clean it or over massage it then it almost becomes biased just by the process of cleaning it so doing it in a non-biased way is really crucial now the next step the fourth step in your data engineering life cycle is data modeling and warehousing uh, and what i really want to focus on is data modeling here which is involves designing data schemas that can efficiently support both the operational and analytical needs of the business. And that's why I have this graph up here showing, hey, you have both the process model and the data model that need to converge within some kind of requirement stock, really through dialogue with your business team to say, hey, how do we design a database that can best support the actual business need for this database? Having efficient database queries for the sake of da efficient database queries will impress no one. It's not going to get you ahead in the world. Uh, it is only going to impress other data engineers. Um, so making sure you're designing a data model in conjunction with the side of the business and actually making it useful is crucial. And so data warehousing, you know, on top of this also helps by consolidating data into a single repository that will then support this business intelligence and reporting. And so effective modeling really needs to support the scalability of the data and the speed of the queries, because if you have everything in a single data warehouse, uh, it's tons of data and having structured queries and database, your database designed in a efficient way means that you don't need to spend, spend you know, tons of money and tons of time running and waiting for queries to run because you have an inefficiently designed database. And so some challenging challenges include here, designing models that are flexible enough to you know, evolve with changing data needs, handling the performance degradation that can occur with large volumes of data, and then also you know, ensuring the security and compliance of data in the warehouse is critical. If you want a video breaking down all the different types of data models, check out my other video on that. Uh, but that's kind of the four steps summed up, um, you know, really just setting the state, building the processes, not even the product, the framework for your data um, to be accessed in an easy, easy way. So now that your data is in a warehouse, it's been a proper structure, it's been cleaned, it's been refined, the next step is actually analyzing the data. And this phase is involving applying, you know, it's data analysis and is applying statistical methods, machine learning algorithms, doing things like any of these types of analysis, and there are many different types, to derive insights from data. Maybe you're trying to predict the future. Maybe you're trying to analyze what went wrong in the previous quarter. 
whatever you're doing, this is the next stage um, where data scientists, analysts, explore data, even business users, through, explore that data through various techniques to identify trends, patterns, anomalies in your data. Um, and so this is where it's really crucial that you have accurate, properly clean data uh, because data analysis can really be hindered by poor data quality, inadequate data processing, and overfitting models to data or making incorrect assumptions about the underlying data distributions can lead to misleading insights, which then can derail an entire business if they're applied uh, without first verifying that the data was, or the insights were derived from accurate data. Um, so really crucial step here. And then kind of in tandem with this, so five and six in my mind are kind of linked, but you know, tell me in the comments if you feel otherwise, where you also have data visualization and reporting happening at this level. Um, and visualization is crucial for, for actually taking these, bit, these data insights and presenting them to the business um, and really making it datable, ac data accessible to decision makers through you know, things like this, like charts, graphs, interactive dashboards, making it all pretty. And reporting involves the regular provision of these insights through you know, things like automated reporting, dashboards, updating in real time, where maybe you don't even talk to a business or business user, you're just updating a dashboard that then the CEO consumes. And so the real critical need here is to create effective visualizations that can accurately represent the data without introducing a bias towards one way of thinking or the other or misinterpretation. So even though you might not be constantly talking to the business users that's consuming them, you need to make sure that they have a very clear understanding of what these graphs represent. Um, and then on top of that, just ensuring that reports are timely, relevant, accessible to all stakeholders, requires careful planning and execution, as does anything um, within the business. So that's kind of the last step of one cycle, one data life cycle, but there is still one more, and that is good old pipeline maintenance. Um, and so this is really a final phase that I see as taking place, you know, kind of throughout the entire process. Um, and that's because this involves the ongoing maintenance of those data processes and systems. Outside of just individual data pipelines, making sure that your actual systems in place to process them are really robust. Um, and, you know, because data and the processes we and systems we use are changing so fast over time, this requires a lot of ongoing maintenance. <laughs> so this means things like updating data sets, refining models, enhancing data collection and analysis processes based on you know feedback, new business requirements, basically never getting stagnant and happy with where you are, but continue to improve and you know always have a critical eye when looking at your existing work to see, hey, where can I introduce some new efficiencies? Um, and some difficulties in here with you know pro data maintenance over time is maintaining the integrity and relevance of data over time requires robust data governance and, and quality assurance processes. So adapting to new technologies and methodologies while ensuring system stability and data accuracy can be quite complex. So something to note there as well. Um, and that's really the true last step of the data adhering life cycle before it starts all over again. Um, and this is a really complex but essential process um, that requires you know, careful consideration at each individual phase to ensure the reliability and utility of your data. Um, and so Make sure you understand the typical processes, potential fit, pitfalls you can run into so that you can make sure that you're prepared to meet the challenges of just the overwhelming tidal wave of data that is engulfing every industry these days uh, so you can wrangle it and make it best used for your business. So I hope you have enjoyed this video today. I hope you learned something. and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Data Guy out.